We are minutes away from the Fed's next rate decision. Let's bring in Vincent Reinhardt, chief economist of Dreyfus and Mellon and former FOMC economist and Gennady Goldberg, head of U.S. rate strategy at TD Securities. And gentlemen, I wonder if Jay Powell and other Fed members have already kind of shown their hand, uh, you know, acknowledging the higher inflation data that we've had pushing out the forecast for the next rate cut. Vince, I'll start with you. Is there anything that Jerome Powell could say that might surprise investors because we've already pushed out the prospect of a rate cut this summer. So the FOMC hates surprises. So you're right. There'll be no element of surprise in the in the statement. The only ability to surprise will be Jay Powell at his press conference. He tends to be a little bit more optimistic than the rest of his colleagues. He was the last among the whole bunch who finally gave up the possibility of easing in June. So it'll be interesting as he answers questions in his press conference starting a uh, half hour after the announcement, uh, his tone, whether he looks for the silver uh, rays in these clouds, whether he emphasizes things like the senior loan officer survey, for instance. Gennady, is the market right where the Fed would like it to be, you know, contrasting with where we were at the beginning of the year, pricing in all these rate cuts? Now we've wiped those off. Um, is, is there much job owning left to do? Probably not. Um, to be quite honest, the, the market's actually been a little bit more extreme uh, than uh, certainly the Fed. I don't think the Fed's actually shifted that excessively, uh, but I think, you know, uh, uh, in regards to what was said earlier, it, there's certainly room for Powell to surprise relative to what the markets are expecting. The markets have already gotten quite hawkish. The pricing for cuts has gotten down to just one. Um, if you remember, just a couple of months ago, we were pricing in a full rate cut by March and six rate cuts in 2024, and that's down to one. So I think there's lots of room for surprise, uh, but really from uh, Chair Powell's tone and maybe not that much more job owning to do. So maybe he'll actually uh, disappoint some of the folks looking for a more hawkish message. Vince, we've been operating in what we thought could be a unicorn scenario. We still get growth. We still get inflation falling. Um, inflation has been sort of robust. Today is a great example of softening growth data, you know, either whether it's the manufacturing sector or job openings, uh, slowing to the to the least in, in three years. Um, do you think we might see that cool down in growth and thus inflation starts to uh, get in line? Well, well, those are two separate questions. I do think we're going to see a slowdown in growth. And it's usually the survey-based evidence that leads the cycle. And it is instructive that when we ask people how they're feeling, they're pretty negative. Uh, the, 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 the data are not yet turning all that much. Although there's a little bit of softness on the edges in some of the employment information. So, yes, I think we're going to get a slowing in activity. We have to. We, we, we can't get the growth rates of, of, of the first part of this year and late last year uh, without really pressing on resources. Second question is, will that be associated with some slowing in inflation? And the problem is the last mile in reducing inflation is hard. We think yes, uh, but it's going to be slow. It'll be unsatisfying to the Fed, and um, it will therefore put, put off their ambitions to ease policy to late this year, if at all. Gennady, I was, I was actually going to ask if maybe the markets got too hawkish, but, you know, hearing Vince, maybe, um, you know, the Fed would prefer to be behind the curve on this. I think to some extent, uh, the market's actually done the Fed's work for them. Mm. So perhaps Powell doesn't need to be all that hawkish here. I, I agree. But I think the hardest thing for markets is that period of uncertainty, uh, that, you know, the, the fact that we're kind of higher for longer, that's just killer for markets. Uh, they just don't know what to do here. They're overreacting to every single data point. Uh, they're extrapolating trends. And I think we're going to have that volatility continue. You know, I think, you know, you've even had markets talking about rate hikes rather than rate cuts. I think that's a little bit extreme here, but higher for longer is a very tough tough place for markets to be. And I think we're just gonna to continue to have a lot of chop in a range, uh, at least in the rates market. 